All right, let's get out of the protocols for a second and talk about half duplex and full duplex. Because with these different technologies, some of them can communicate uh, in half duplex and others can communicate in full duplex. So let's talk about what the difference is between those. Here, I've just got our telegraph example once again. And when that signal is being sent across the line, this device right here is either sending electrons over or not sending electrons over. We only have two states really that this is it can, this can be in, it's either on or off. And so it's using up this line between the two, point A and point B. And so what happens with a telegraph is when you're on one side and you're communicating uh, using that one side and information is being sent over to the other side, no other communication can happen. So this telegrapher cannot send an information back to this location right here. You would have to run a whole separate line and have separate equipment in order to be able to transfer data in both directions at the same time. So this is the difference between half duplex and full duplex. Half duplex just means that only data can flow in only one direction at a time and that, that data has to stop before it can, information can flow back versus full duplex is both sending and receiving can happen at the same time. So now let's talk about half duplex and full duplex. So in this network example right here, let's say we have a hub that's sitting in between. And this machine right here needs to, t needs to talk. And so what it does is it sends out a communication and that communication gets broadcasted out all of its lines, all of its ports. And that is how a hub will work. We know that a hub is just a multi-port repeater. And so whatever comes into it on one of the ports, it gets sent out every other port. Now let's say there's a machine that wants to talk at the same time. And so this machine right here communicates at the same time. And now what this uh, hub is doing is it's trying to communicate the same signal or two different signals out every single port. That's not, it can't do that. It can't have two signals that are going out every single port. And so what a hub does is it creates a half duplex network, a network where only one device can talk at a time. That is not ideal. Obviously we want communication to flow much, much better than that. We want a full duplex system where multiple devices can talk at the same time. So to do that, what we would do is we would replace this hub with a switch. And in a switch scenario, a computer tries to talk, it's sending out to a single machine. So let's say it's trying to talk to the server right here and it sends it out that, that frame out to this server right here. If another device is trying to talk at the same time, a switch is able to send that to another device. And so communication can actually happen in a two-way format on this, on this switch because the switch is much more intelligent on how it can handle those frames and where that, those frames are being sent to. It does a lot of mechanisms to help facilitate this. And we're gonna be talking about those different, th those different mechanisms that switches use in order to facilitate full duplex. But a switch will operate in full duplex versus a hub will operate in half duplex. So now traditionally our lands had hubs in the middle of it and hubs we know are half duplex. Only one device could talk at a time. And if two devices did talk at the same time, what would happen is what's called a collision. We need some way to be able to mitigate this or stop it from happening altogether. So there's what we have to do is we have to have some sort of access control method, some sort of way that devices on a network can still be able to talk without having all these collisions or to mitigate those collisions. So there's two different methods that we can do to have some sort of access control. We can, number one, have a, a controlled and a controlled only allows one device at the same time. So it eliminates that there would ever be any collisions. Or we could have contention-based. Contention-based means that 
one of the, the collision could happen, two devices could happen, but they deal with it or overcome when a collision does take place. And so we'll, we're gonna be talking about a controlled method to stop collisions from happening or a contention based of how to deal with collisions if they happened. So if your access control method is controlled, then that means that each one of these machines is given a time slot in which it can speak. You possibly have some sort of orchestrator that says, okay, it is your turn to speak gives that a moment for that machine to speak. And if it has nothing to say, goes to the next machine and says, okay, now it is your turn to speak. And then it passes it around. So token ring is an example of this. And one reason why it's called ring is because it goes from machine to machine. It says it is now your turn, your opportunity to speak. Now, what we found is that a lot of machines may not necessarily have much to say during this round robin as it goes from machine to machine. And so there is some limitations that we found with this methodology of using a controlled method, um, but it could be effective depending on the type of protocol that's being used. So that is the controlled access control method. Versus contention based just allows any machine to talk at any time. Now, of course, what this causes is that sometimes there's going to be collisions on the network where two devices could talk at the same time and the collision happens. So now we need some sort of mechanism to deal with that collision. So contention based just allows any machine to talk. And there's two methodologies that we're going to be talking about with this. And first of all is CSMA slash CD. And then we'll talk about CSMA dash CA collision avoidance versus collision detection. CSMA stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access. So let's talk about the MA part or the multiple access. That's really simple. That just means this network is being accessed by multiple devices. There's multiple access from many different devices. So multiple access. Then let's talk about the carrier sense. Carrier sense means that before this device decides to speak, it's going to listen or it's going to sense. It's going to sense to see if any other device is talking on the line at that time. So it's gonna sense the line and only communicate if it senses that no other communication is trying to happen during that time. So that's carrier sense. So collision detection is still carrier sense multiple access. Devices on this network still listen to see if anyone else has communicated. If they're not communicating, then they will try to communicate. And if two devices happen to be listening and try to communicate at the same time, and there's a hub here in between, since it's half duplex, we will cause a collision. And so we have a collision detect. A collision detect just speeds up this whole process by as it is trying to communicate, it will sense to see if there is a collision. And if there is a collision, they will stop communicating right away rather than trying to continue to communicate. So collision detect helps speed up this process by, hey, I am in the process of communicating and I sense that there's a collision. I'm going to stop uh, speaking right away. And now I'm going to go into my back off algorithm. I'm going to wait a random amount of time. This device waits a random amount of time. This device waits a random amount of time. The chances are those are going to be two different time frames. And then this device will try to communicate. And then this device will wait until that device is done communicating before it will try to communicate. So this is collision detect. Collision detect detects to see if there's a collision, stops communicating right away, goes through the back off algorithm to wait a random amount of time. So we see this in uh, networks like ethernet networks where it's, uh, they're all cabled together and where specifically where there's a hub in between. If we have a switch in between, this is a non-issue because a switch is uh, a full duplex. And so whatever, what happens with the switch is those collision domains, everything that we have within here, uh, if it's a hub, everything is part of this collision domain. This is uh, capable of having a collision. But if we have a switch that's involved here, that can be full duplex, 
communication can happen all at the same time. And so it separates out our collision domains to every single port on this switch is a separate collision domain and we don't get collisions. So when we talk about CSMACD, it's a protocol that exists more when we have collisions. It's needed more for when we have collisions within here. But when we replace this equipment with things like switches, it becomes a lot less necessary because we have separated out our collision domains and we don't have near the same amount of collisions that are happening on our network. Collision avoidance operates in much the same way. It still carrier sends multiple access. So a device that wants to speak on the network is still listening to see if any other device is talking. And before they speak, uh, the, there's a small difference with collision avoidance. And that is, is before they speak, they are going to send a little message out saying, I intend to speak. So the difference here between CD and CA is CD, collision detection, will try to send all of its information out that it wants to get out there, the whole frame. It wants to send the whole frame out and just see if it, there's some sort of collision versus collision avoidance will just say, I intend to speak. Make sure that that doesn't collide with anybody else's intent to speak. And once it determines yes, then it sends its information out. There could be some sort of moderator even, even in between saying, okay, you're, you're, this is your opportunity to speak. So collision avoidance just makes sure that uh, there's, tries to avoid the collision to begin with. So we still see this widely implemented. Uh, in fact, we see it wide, uh, implemented in a lot of networks because it's what wireless uses as its communication method. Wireless, essentially your wireless access point is just a hub. It is only half duplex. Only one device can speak at one time uh, because of the limitations of the access point. And so uh, this is the method that is used to avoid those collisions. And uh, if there is a collision, then, then it ha has to go through that back off algorithm and once again wait. So that is CSMA collision avoidance. Hope you're enjoying the videos. If you like them, could you hit that like button?